Hey, what's up? Just want to thank you guys for watching our channel. Please hit that subscribe button. Brian, I know we're a little crunched on time because you're busy doing TV appearances I'm today. Sorry. So I actually want to spend the rest of our time talking about you specifically. Oh, no. No, uh, look, I, I, this has been documented. Um, you know, you went to the same high school as LeBron. Uh, you covered him in high school. Um, I, I've just, you you now have been uh, covering the NBA for 20 years. And I, I want to just kind of get your perspective on, and, and a little bit of the backstory, just on the evolution of your career from someone who started uh uh, uh, working for the the Akron newspaper to now all of a sudden you're an NBA analyst, an NBA reporter, national reporter, uh, newsbreaker, first take personality, which we'll get to at the very end. But just the evolution of your career and just the perspective that you have on it as it relates to those early years with LeBron. When I first started, I was 25. LeBron was 18 and neither one of us had a clue what was going on. Um, he was obviously super duper talented um, and, and his talent kind of overruled all. They wouldn't have given me the job at age 25 if they didn't think I had a chance to be successful. I don't want to say that I was, you know, anything like that, but I had some level of ability, which is why I got it at age 25, which back then you didn't get at age 25. You didn't get that type of job until later in your year. Um, so, but I had absolutely no idea what was going on. Like stuff would happen and go zooming over my head. Um, the concept of the travel was brutal. Um, even though I like to travel, you know, like 41 road trips on commercial airlines in the winter, living in the cold weather city, you better make it happen. Um, and, um, with no backup, you know, there was no like, if you got sick, you just fought through it, you know, basically. So um, to now, 20 years in, I've seen just about everything that you can see in the league. Uh, and so when I see things happen, I can be like, well, you know, back in 05, this happened. I mean, that, that's what used to blow me away about Pat Riley. The the four years I covered the heat and, and the, the interactions I would have Riley, which were not many. When I would talk to Riley or listen to Riley talk, there was nothing that happened, literally nothing that happened where Riley couldn't say, well, you know, back in 82 or back in, you know, 76 or, you know, in 2003 or when we won the title in 2006, the guy had experience and knew how to do everything and that had been through everything and had seen it all and had a calmness about everything. He's one of the most impressive people I've ever met in any walk of life. And I say this, I don't think he likes me. We do not have a relationship. I have a relationship with many powerful people in the NBA. There's, you know, many powerful people I can call up and have a great relationship with. He's not one of them. I don't think he likes me. That said, um, overwhelmingly impressed by the Heat organization, overwhelmingly impressed by Pat Riley. And one of the things that about him is that he had seen so much. I feel like 20 years in, I see stuff happen now and I go, I know, I know what's going to happen there. Or they don't know what's going to happen. Like, okay, I've seen this before. Here's what's going to happen. Or I see somebody doing something and I go, yep, that's a move. And it doesn't always inform like the way, like I never, I don't always say it that way, but like, basically I'm young enough to work 18 hour days for two, three months at a time, which is required ESPN. But I've been around long enough that you can't pull the wool over my eyes. I still get surprised every now and then, but I can still see an organization or a player or a coach say something and go, nope, I'm not falling for that. And that is where I can, where I feel my experience is I see a team trying to do this and I'm like, oh no, 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 no. I'm not letting you get away with that nonsense. Uh, and um, it's, it's, I'm really in a wonderful spot right now because I, I, I still feel like I'm in, like really good handle on the NBA and have experience, but still am excited about it every day, which I know will fade, right? Like I see people who were at my stage when I took over, I was like, man, that guy knows what's going on who get to a point where it's like, yeah, I'm done with it. And I think I'll get to that point where I'll be like, yeah, I'm done with it. Or ESPN or somebody else will be done with me. And they're like, yep, you're done. Um, but I, I think I'm a little ways away from that. And so I feel like I'm in a good spot. Um, I, I, 
I have a question going back to what you said about Pat Riley. Why, why do you think Pat Riley doesn't like you? Um, I think the heat felt that I was in some way complicit in the believing, even though that's kind of laughable. Um, when he went back to Cleveland. Yeah. Because in, at the end of the lockout, it became clear to me that LeBron was going to go back to Cleveland. And I, and on this case, I did start saying, it. Uh, I didn't know when I didn't even a hundred percent know that it was going to be in 2014. I thought maybe they, he would give it one more year. Um, I just hedged against that. Um, but, uh, and the, by the way, the Cavs didn't either. <laughs> the Cavs didn't have the cap space. They, they didn't know they were, they famously had Gordon Hayward in their building and they were going to sign him to an offer sheet to be their small forward, which would have been matched by you. Gordon Hayward was there. They sent Dan Gilbert's private jet into Indianapolis where he lived to get him. You know, like they didn't think he was coming. Um, but uh, I think that some people in the, in the heat organization thought that I like pushed forward or something. I just saw it. I saw that it was going to happen. And I didn't talk about it every day, but I did talk about it. And um, I don't know. It kind of left a scar. And like, I, I get it. I get it. Like, um, if LeBron had left, had just stayed in, in Miami and just going there, the Heat would have continued to have bites at the apple. And he's won two titles, and he won, he might have won two more titles in Miami, and it may have been a glorious run. And Pat Riley could not compute why he wouldn't stay there for that. So I kind of get it. But I also could just tell that he wanted to go home too. But I have a great relationship with the Heater. Now I have immense respect for them, but I do think when it went down that there was some bad feelings there.